Hi, I'm Kevin. Hi, I'm Jeff. And we are here to talk about the Tupperwave Stack Cooker. Woohoo! <laughs> um, so, I love this for microwave cooking. Um, what are the things that you like to make in your Tupperwave Stack Cooker? Oh man, what have we made in this? Um, it is great for doing, I make the taco soup in here all the time. It is great for, um, first of all, let's talk about the pieces. Let's there do. is a three quart casserole. Yep. A one and three quarter quart casserole. A colander or a strainer, and then a three quarter quart lid, lid which you can use this way or as right. a cooking piece. So you can actually stack and do three layers, yep. which we're going to do today. Um, but the best thing about this is if you take the colander and oh, and, and there's a cone. Piece. Yes, a cone. you can do bundt cakes or cakes. Um, the cool thing about the cone in here is there's a little um, raised circle in the bottom of the three quart casserole and it'll catch the cone. So the microwaves bounce off of the, um, the plastic cooker and if you put the cone in, it'll bounce off the inside and the outside and your items will cook faster and they'll cook through. Right, quicker. so if you're doing a cake, you don't want to do a cake without your cone because it really helps it cook all the way through the cake. And if you want it, you could do a round, like a ring meatloaf in there and you could put that down in there as well. Um, and it comes with two seals. Mm -hmm. So if you want to seal up uh, your three quart casserole or your one and three quarter, then uh, these can go in the freezer or uh, into the, well, I mean, freezer slash we say, or fridge too. Yes. So it comes with two seals. So if you make like a casserole, you can just seal it off and you can use it for um, tomorrow. So okay. you don't have to dirty additional dishes. Yes. So I use mine independently of all these pieces. I'll brown my beef um, in this because that's what we're going to show you today is how all the nasty fat will drain down into your lower colander if you're doing your ground beef or your ground turkey. Um, but you can do rice in the bottom. You can do vegetables. This is really great for um, steaming vegetables. So you can put like a couple of tablespoons of water in here with your broccoli or your cauliflower and then put this in the microwave like that and you can steam your vegetables, which is really great. You can with or without do, the colander. You can do a, a, a chicken by yes. putting the cone in yes. and then sitting the chicken down on it. On his and then just kind of sit there on his butt with, up his that, wazoo. with that cone up his butt. And then you can flip this this way and then the higher dome will allow this to cook in the microwave which is really great. And these have these little, um, I'm wondering, these bumpy things right here. And that actually is there for a purpose because what that does is this holds uh, these up above the floor of the microwave so that the microwaves can actually pass underneath here too. Um, I've seen people use this too, have you, where you flip this this way and you can uh, use this in the microwave and then those little things actually interlock with one another so it doesn't slide around when it's in the microwave. I've seen that happen. It's like Legos, you can build almost anything. It is. So we are going to make a fast, easy meal today in the microwave. Oh, and the thing that we want to talk about, because of microwave cooking, you guys, um, in any of our Tupperware um, cookware in the microwave, is that it's fast and easy, it's energy efficient, right? And you set it, and you... Forget it. Forget it. So if you come home and you can put everything in the microwave, and then set the microwave, you can go walk the dog, do homework with the kids, water the plants, do the gardening or whatever, in take the microwave, nap. take them, <laughs> have a drink. <laughs> and then pass out. And then your stove, your microwave actually shuts itself off. You don't get that when you're working in, with an oven or a skillet or anything like that. Exactly. Okay, so we are going to stack cook a meal for you tonight. Paschetti with ground beef and marinara. Woo! Awesome. So what's our first step? Um, we are going to put water in yes. the three-quart colander. Three-quart, so that's and this one. We pre-measured. We've got three cups of water. So we're going to put the water in the three-quart casserole. Four cups. Three. Oh, our four. art director is telling us this. Oh, four. Know. Three, I four. Didn't read this I didn't read We didn't think we needed our glasses. I don't really like this, so. and, uh, and when we were watching Nancy do this yesterday night, um, she kind of didn't really measure her pasta, so but she did crack it in half. So how many of these do we want to do? Um, one. Another one. I got a short one. And this is our spaghetti dispenser from Tupperware, yes. which is awesome for Where's your measure? long spaghetti. Oh, who knows? It's probably in the pantry somewhere. Oops, there goes that. All right. Um, so that's our spaghetti dispenser. So that's our pasta. I would give that probably a little stir so it's not stuck together. Did she put any oil in it? She did no oil. Now she might have, I don't think she salted her water, but you can, but um, you don't have to. And there goes the phone. Maybe this, that was my phone. Did you have salt? Ro, ro, yes, a little bit of salt. Salt is actually important when you are cooking your pasta because it adds flavor to your pasta. So give us a little salt. Perfect. Um, and then we're going to take our um, 
one and three quarter, right? Yes. And we're gonna sit that on top of that. And then our colander, because we're going to drain the fat into here and catch it, and then our beef goes in. Is that and one we pound? Just, it is a pound, and we pre-crumbled it is what we did to it. Perfect. And then we'll give that a little toss around. And then we're gonna heat the, oh, do we wanna put seasoning on it? We can. So garlic powder, um, Italian seasoning, you can put it in your sauce. Um, you can also put it in your ground beef. Um, these are our little spice shakers. So a little bit of the Italian herb. That's basically oregano. It's just a, a, um, a spice blend that I got from the store. Um, and then a little garlic powder. If you, don't, if you have fresh garlic, you can use fresh garlic, but I like to use garlic powder. And then we're going to- We're gonna take the cover and invert it. And we're gonna use a jarred sauce. And we're just gonna pour the jarred sauce into the cover, just like that. Shall we? If you wish. Will that fit in there? No. Um, and then, so this doesn't splatter all over, we want to cover this before we put it into the microwave with um, some wax paper. Now you can also season, you wanna grab your seasoning okay. over there, add a little bit of more seasoning. I always, I love jarred sauces just because they're simple, but I always doctor them up a little bit. You can add hot pepper flake to it if you want a little bit of spicy marinara. We do the same thing at home. Yep. And then this is gonna go into the microwave for how long? Did she tell us last 15 minutes. Yeah. Now, the thing with your microwave, you guys, is as soon as you start using this more at home, you're gonna find how long you wanna put stuff into the microwave because you're gonna find that sweet spot. Some microwaves are stronger than others. I think mine is a 1200 uh, watt microwave. Um, it's always best to cook things less and you add, can add time. Add time because you can't uncook something. Why so, don't we do it for 12? Do it for 12. Okay, we're gonna do it for 12. We're gonna cover so we don't have any splattery messes. And we'll do 12 minutes and then check it and we'll come back and show you the finished product. We'll see you in a bit. Awesome. Welcome we're, back. We're back. <laughs> okay, so uh, by the magic of television, we did drain our pasta, but um, we this cooked is it great. for. We did 12 minutes to start, checked the meat and the pasta. Neither one were completely done, so we put it in for another three minutes. Ooh, steam. Steam. All right. So, um, because what you want to do is you want to make sure that you drain your pasta because we're going to mix in this lower one. So what we did is we just went to the sink and just kind of use this and drained. You want to leave a little your pasta water in uh, in there because it's going to help with your sauce, right? What do they call that? Whatever. Italian. <laughs> they call Italian. Italian. But here's what I want to show you. So remember we did this in the um, the uh, colander. So look at that. I mean, you guys, this is where all that nasty, nasty, nasty is. And what was that hamburger? That was 96% lean um, from the and Aldi. That's just from from icky. the trailer park pal Aldi. <laughs> that's really icky so that's nasty. Gross. Um, right. And I always buy 96, um, and I never realized that kind of Yeah, it's, it's it. crazy. So that's great, so healthy, right? So then what we're gonna do is just want me to go ahead and put the, go ahead and put the beef in. Yep. Okay, so beef. beef goes in, all right? And then our sauce. And this was all cooked in one unit, you guys. I mean, that's what I love about the stack cooker is that you can do all kinds of things, um, and it all goes in, and it you all comes out. Waste perfectly good red yeah. sauce. All right, so give that a toss. Oh my God, that smells amazing. Delicious, delicious, delicious. So, I mean, fast and easy meal for the family, um, and I mean, for Jeff and I, that's certainly gonna feed us and have some leftovers, so. Um, Check that out. Yep. That is your Tupperwave stack cooker. One hot meal. We should try that, I think. Should we? Oh, I don't know. That's what I love about cooking with you because then we can have a little taste test. Which is delish. All right. Oh, these are mine. Oh, <laughs> no, here, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, um, oh my gosh, it looks atomically hot. So, uh, do you twirl? I just did. Do you twirl with a spoon, obviously? No. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. That's really good. The pasta is perfect. 
Pasta is perfect. Just a tad al dente. Um, and of course, you would want to use your master grater system to grate your Parmesan cheese, which we should have had that out to show you. But um, maybe we'll do another video with that. So you want to grind um, uh, your The trick cheese. with that, double grind it. Use the, sm yeah. the fine cone, grind the fresh Parmesan, and then run it through again, and it'll get a little finer grate, similar to... <laughs> Shaky cheese, shaky cheese, which that comes out of this. Some people the really powdered don't shaky like that. cheese that um, many of our friends say don't use. Yes, um, but anyway, so that is our video for today, and um, thanks for joining us. See ya.